as they uh, work their way in, but we're going to start off with our golden ticket holder to the World Championship. Normally playing for Tomp and I Empire, but during the ESL Mobile Challenge, playing with Space Station Gaming, it's Rigo Torres coming in. He missed it in the last war, and he needs to get in here and make up for it on this one. He's got a Queen Charge Lalo. Yeah, I want I want him to three star on this just so I can hear you scream his name at the end because it sounds always <laughs> always sounds pretty cool. But look at this, the tornado trap early exposed right here, which is great. Two black bombs getting taken out of the air as well by that balloon. So let's talk about value early on. Really good value mm -hmm. out of this queen charge. I'm happy to see it. And look at this, dropping the invisibility spell so that the queen's gonna take down the inferno tower first so that it doesn't beat up on her healers. I'm assuming, and then move on over to the storage. So pretty smart and and. Uh, Nice use, in my opinion, wow. of that invisibility spell. Was that uh, like a, a crazy IQ play right there? Yeah, that was actually really clever there to try to push the queen directly into the multi inferno so she didn't get distracted. The freeze got him through the enemy queen. He was able to get the scatter shot down, protecting the queen on her flank. He wall breaks for her to leave, but she's going after the CC first. I don't know which way she's going to break here. He wall broke on the right side of that compartment to push her out there, and maybe he was just wall breaking there to set up another wall breaker to push the queen into the core of the base, but he does have the blimp here, and the blimp uh -oh. can go pick off that town hall. He has to use the rage. The queen beats through a wall. She's not taking the wall breaks. She is going to step into the town wow. hall. I don't think that's what he planned, but it is really good value, and it's definitely something <laughs> that he can work with here. Yeah, oh, queen accidentally takes down the town hall. I mean, it's not oops. the worst thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, oops. But, you know, I love the use of the freeze spell. He froze that expo, which allowed the queen to stay alive, break through the wall, and then take down the town hall. So really nicely done by Rigatoris, who's uh, one of the best Lalo's inside of the game. We're seeing some of that right here. Question is, is going to be to finish this one off you got the stone slammer from down below opening wall taking down defenses really just crushing everything along the way dragons as well this base looks crushed to me we've seen crazy things happen with balloons going down but man this is looking very very nice and as i say that these balloons are taking a bit of damage the queen the queen is she, the queen goes down did i speak too early is it wait look at these balloons look at these healers here the healers are getting pulled by the wizard over the top of oh, the inferno wow. that's going to provide tanking and he might be able to still pull through the warden and the owl can finish off that they have the dragon he's got the time the he's healers continue it. to provide tanking and that wizard coming on the backside to draw the healers across right as the queen goes down and that is going to give him enough here Rigo Torres yeah. with the triple and space station gaming will start off with a strong push here and uh, forced the, the early uh, disadvantage here to happy endings if they can't triple. <laughs> that was crazy. Nice way to finish it. The healers started the attack and the healers ended the attack. I mean, that queen charge was crazy. Didn't go as planned, we don't think, yet still got massive value. And then the tanking, I mean, it was only a mm -hmm. beam or two, but it helped out and it allowed that infernal tower to go down. Rigatoris, we heard the scream out of you, Eric, so I'm happy I can go home a happy guy right now. <laughs> but that's a nice triple for Space Station Gaming, starting off the war the way that they wanted to start off that last war. So now they yeah, started it out right. That's right. Indy coming in for happy and his first attack. He attacked later in the war, so he must be in the last one. So he must be confident about his plan. Start an officer opener on this one. He's got a blizzard here as he gets ready to go in with dragons. Blizzard dragon is one of the strongest and simplest attacks here that a lot of people like to use, but you have to arrive these super wizards safely to that town hall area. He was able to arrive on target. He is able to take out that entire section of the base. They're pulling the CC. Huge huge value. He gets wow. the last invisibility to not cover the queen, so the super wizards can target her. They take her as well. He just needs to get one more shot on these uh, these CC troops, but he, I guess he doesn't really need that. He's got so much value out of this. He'll draw the CC in the top corner here and set up for his heroes to start to make their approach. I mean, that was good value. It would have been 10% cooler if he did get the clan castle too, but still, very nice value he got out of that blizzard. I love seeing it just really make the center of a base disappear. But now he's going to have that dragon deal with those super Minions, poison spell is going to keep him slow and take that health away as well. Then the dragons are going to start pathing on through. No dragon riders in this one, though. Just all dragons, all balloons, with a bunch of invisibility, rage, and one freeze spell to support on the back end. Now, notice no heroes have been deployed yet. There's not one hero on the base, just dragons mm -hmm. and one, two Very balloons. Yeah, what, what's mm -hmm. going on with the heroes? Is he going to, like, right, clean sorry, up? Well, the, the heroes can come in on the left flank there, and if they 
if they work their way in through the air defense over there on the left, then he'll be in a pretty strong spot here. He drops in more dragons all the way on the left, and if he can... Actually, maybe the heroes going after the eagle artillery and try to collapse in that side of the funnel. And there's uh, definitely some good potential for them to come in on the side. There we go. The king breaks into the wall there. He'll attack the wall directly with his yak to open up. He'll step in there. He can fight the storages, not leaving any structures behind. That's the nice part about dragons is they'll attack everything, so he doesn't have heroes kind of turning backwards and going after them. He's got a nice push going to the enemy road champion. Still looking really strong here. Just needs to get his queen and the king to work their way across to this eagle artillery and just keep the pathing for the dragons tight. Yeah, uh, he's got a lot of dragons left over, which can definitely push through a lot of this base. I don't know that I love where those heroes were dropped. I understand trying to set the funnel, but they didn't get any massive value. They didn't take anything, you know, big down. They just kind of right. took down a bunch of storages along the outside, definitely helped with funneling, but there's a scatter shot and a single target Inferno on the back side of the base. Now the champion's gonna come in. There is the invisibility spell as well. He very well could have enough to get through this. I guess we're gonna have to see how much, how long these heroes do stand. Queen's ability is intact, yeah. champion's ability is intact, and there's the invisibility spell. So I could have, you know, prematurely been nervous. Yeah, another single inferno. You're right. Uh -oh. The single inferno is going to be a big problem here. He does have all the dragons getting shot out of the sky here. He'll go to the multi inferno with the road champion first, staying away from the single inferno for now. He's got his queen. He's got a whole bunch of barbarians. And if he gets this wizard tower down, then the barbarians can tank for the uh, road champion and the queens to make their approach. The road champion steps oh, to the backside, but he's out of time. What? I didn't even look at the what? clock here. Indy, out of time. I wasn't even looking at that. I thought he had it. I thought he's going to pull it through there. But it is going to be a 98% time. I feel he had enough wow. to take it here, Echo. I was completely blindsided when the so, deck ended. I was like, oh my god, I didn't realize it. So was I. I'm <laughs> staring at the screen just watching that right. champion. Like, is she going to get the, the Inferno? And then it just dies. Time. Yeah. Totally did not see <laughs> oh, that coming no. either. It got both of us. But, you know, it, it was very, very close. It was down to a couple of seconds, and that would have been a triple. My, my concern mm -hmm. about those heroes was not a valid one at the end of the day, but... Also, at the end of the day, yeah, Space Station Gaming is coming off of the one-star advantage to start out this war, which is something they didn't see earlier, and it's really what Happy Endings had in their previous war. They're starting out this one on a little bit of a, a step back from what they did in the previous war earlier on this evening. Yeah, and playing from behind when you're in a, a big stage like this is very daunting, and it looks like we have Nick. He came in with this Skelly Donut Lalo in the last war, and it looks like he's gonna be trying it again as he has four invisibilities. He's got three skeleton spells. He's got the Earthquake. He's got the Rain. There's a lot of spells that go into this, but look at the spacing here between the mm -hmm. scatter shot and the CC. If he can get out both of those, he's in a really strong spot here. A couple of Tesla's pop on him, but the invisibility comes down to the perfect spot there, and he'll be able to go take out both of these. He drops in the Quake to get the battle builders to go and repair wow. their own huts there. More invisibilities dropping in. He is a to take out the scattershot and the CC, also grabbing out the sweepers. Big value there. Didn't get a Tesla in the core there. He did draw the Teslas out. He'll leave one standing, but he got the sweeper that's pointing off to the left. And is that the side that he wants to come into Lalo? I don't think it is. I, or the, yeah, I think he actually wants to come in on the right side and go after those multi infernos first. If I was to choose which side he might want to aim after here, but it looks like the king and the queen will push their way into the town hall while the road champion goes in and takes out that multi inferno on the left. It's, Gotta have the heroes connect to the core of the base there that was uh, taken out there by the skeleton spells. He needs to make sure that all the balloons travel together in a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation around the base. And that means he has to push all the way through that Grand Warden to be able to set that up properly. I mean, that was a, it's really an impressive start wa watching Nick use the invisibilities, use that skeleton spell, really just impressive to see how much value he can get out of those. And you just highlighted him doing this attack, mm. but the queen is going to go down, not be able to shut down that Grand Warden pedestal. And let's see what we can get out of this Stone Slammer here, see what kind of value. Now, I, you know, you always forget, you can get that value where the Stone Slammer just damages walls as well. So you could always send a hero in behind, although the heroes are no longer on this yep. one. But look at this. <laughs> Scatter sh the Stone Slammer is going to take down the Scatter Shot. Dragon's going to move on through. Really nice pathing here. Nick is starting off with a pretty good setup as the Lava Hound goes in in front. Yeah, I like the setup here with the Stone Slammer to finish off the breaking the ring of defense is there so that the balloons are all traveling the same direction around the base. A whole bunch of red bombs going off in the middle. He doesn't warden through it. 
He does lose a bunch of balloons there, and you'll hold on to the board ability to maybe get the headhunters to go in here and take out the enemy world champion. Here they come behind the warden, right under his feet there. He'll pop as he goes through the multi inferno, and this is. It's looking strong here. He just needs to get this enemy world champion down and continue to push these balloons through that multi. He did end up leaving that Tesla up in the middle, but I think he has the traps cleared in the area, so he can circle back to that. He'll freeze up the wizard tower and the air defense. Doesn't get the air defense down. A black mine pops, and this wizard tower is not going to cause any problems here as it is able to it would have been able to hit the entire pack of blues all at the same time and notice the minions and pups over on the left side were able to work their way through that tesla and give a little bit of taking as he makes his approach to the grand warden but looks like he's got it under control here another one is gonna come on the board here for space station gaming this one again coming really really close just like his skelly donut lalo did in the last war but with the warden still standing he'll have no problem picking off these last two buildings and it's gonna be a triple here the pressure is heavy here from Space Station early in this war. With two seconds to spare, you know, I made sure that I looked down at the time that time because, right. you know, it was it was looking really good, but he had two seconds to spare on it. I mean, that's two of that same strategy being used. He used it in the previous mm -hmm. War for Three, and he used it in this War for Three. Really impressive and not easily executed either. Being able to really drop the Rage spell, Invisibility spells, get those Skeleton spells in there, and just remove the Clan Castle altogether. I believe he got a Scatter Shot out of that one, too. Just impressive yeah. stuff. And Space Station Gaming, so far, looking flawless in this war with happy endings. They're behind. They need to pull in a three-star right now. And this, the tables have turned from the last war that happy endings was part of. And right now, we have Tingy. He's coming in with a, uh, a drag bat on this one. Or you could call it a hydra bat, if you wish. But it's really a drag bat. I hear some sneaky goblins as well, setting some funnel on the outside. Set up to go into the top corner. He's in a big dragon to assist the sneaky goblins. Uh, Ice Golem out in front. The King of the Queen gonna try to punch in here and get this scatter shot down. He deploys the dragons and the dragon riders over on the left side to work in parallel with his heroes. That's what I like to see. If they're gonna be traveling the same direction around the base there, as soon as the heroes just get a little bit of lead on him, then he can start in the dragons and the dragon riders get the cross tanking and use them to protect each other as they continue to push through. That is the ideal way to do that. The blip travels through, protected by the water ability. We'll take that town hall down and he just needs to identify the splash damage around the base here and make sure that it is all dealt with so the bats can sweep through but look at this he's got six bat spells with five freezes he can do a big bat wave and protect it heavily all the way through and push it through multiple splash damage defenses if he needs to but big tesla farm popping over on the right side that could complicate the bat bomb ah i don't know there's a there's a lot there's no there's three defenses that offer splash damage left in the base, but there's four mm -hmm. freeze spells left. So he could totally get this done. Plus the champions going around. I mean, early prediction here. I think he's gonna be able to pull in the three star on this one. If that Inferno Tower can go down, he could just bomb right on top of it with the bat spells. He's waiting very long Patient. to use these bats. Yeah. Oh, nice use of the freeze as well getting two of the splash damage defenses with one freeze spell and he's gonna mm -hmm. do that another time or two just on top of that scatter it doesn't even Got need it. to wow Got it. <laughs> wow queen's ability the and two freeze spells in his back pocket that he could save for another day if he could only bring those in on another attack and have a few extra spells <laughs> wouldn't that be a great feature but man that was quick and it was dominant. Oh, he's he's swagging it on SSG's face yeah, right is. there. Oh man, oh man. Uh, good stuff here. He, he's gonna continue to clear it out. He's got so much time left on the board here. The patience of the bats there, just waiting for the opportunity. A lot of times we see the bats start directly on top of the scatter shot, but the Tessa was set up to try to stop that. They know that these teams are very, very popularly using these uh, drag bat attacks. And so they, Build the bases specifically with the Tessas around the scatter shots like that to try to stop the buildup of the bats, but being able to freeze up the Teslas and send the bats in from the side, allow them to build up a swarm, allow them to move through it. It was perfectly executed there, and happy endings. Only two buildings behind here, Echo. Yeah, I mean, we have a very close war right now, and it's, it's again, it's just been the story all night. Everything has been super close, and it's like, who's going to... Who's not going to triple, right? And I mean, Happy right. Endings 2.0, that attack we just saw, 
looked like an attack that we saw in their first war from earlier. Just a very dominant attack that really just took over. And with the amount of time he had left, and like you said, the patience, I would have had my bats deployed 30 seconds earlier. And they probably would have all died <laughs> as well. But really nice, really patient, being able to swag two spells at the end. And right now we have an Inferno Dragon Rider attack coming in from Agent 33. Two light, two lightning spells just to zap out. I believe it was a sweeper that was there in the center of the base. And we have the queen coming in from the top side. She's been able to take down an air defense along the way. There are no wall breakers, so I believe she's just going to be used on the outside just to kind of funnel down the base, narrow things down for the dragon, uh, to the Inf Inferno Dragons. And for a few of those dragon rods, just just wave their way through, just straight on through the base. Nice early Grand Grand Ward Eternal Tome ability as well. We spoke actually, and Varen brought that up, saying that we were seeing people were seeing more success with that early Grand Warden. Let's see if it works this time for Agent Thirty Three. Yeah, he's got the solid uh, protection there from all of the dragons and uh, the, even the heroes as they work their way across the top of the base. He doesn't really want the heroes to go inside of the base on this attack here because if they do, they could end up pulling the CC and that can draw out a Lava Hound unnecessarily. Uh, but it looks like he's, he's doing okay. He's got the Lava Hound pulled out now. That's not what he wanted there, but the Inferno Dragons will lock onto it. They can burn it down super, super fast there. They can clean up pups fast as well. But he does have that Inferno Dragon chasing the the Lava Hound there as it follows the King. He needs the King to just sit still for a second so he can go full beam on that and take it down. He's still looking really good here. He's got tons wow. of skeleton <laughs> spells all across the backside of the base. He's sweeping the whole thing out there. He's gonna clean up the pups there, no big deal. He's absolutely crushed it. Has he even deployed his world champion? Is, he, is he seriously swagging his world <laughs> champion just completely? I think Are he you is. kidding me? I think he is. Whoa. Wow. I think that's a strong I, strategy, and I think he did a nice a job bit. displaying it. That's oh, that's something we haven't seen yet tonight. Let's just let's let this this hero sit this one out. It was kind of like the Valkyrie we saw earlier, but a hero, which is insane. Right, um, right. Wow! <laughs> and it yeah. took half of the time that he had. It. it took like a minute and a half to get that attack done. And they're so slow moving. It's crazy that you could so quickly take down a base with it. Beautiful ex execution nice. out of Agent 33 on that one with the Inferno Dragon Rider attack. Surprised we haven't seen more of that if it succeeds like that. Yeah, I mean, that attack is really, really powerful. It, <laughs> it does require some air defenses that are reachable from the outside so the heroes can get good value. But, I mean, it's a solid attack. We have our next one already live here, Michael Snipes. We saw him yes. in the interview earlier. He's ready to go here, going against one of the biggest name teams in Clash of Clans. And he's coming in with a, looks like a drag bat or a hydra bat here, as he has six dragons and four dragon riders. He's got some ice golems that he can use to work with his king and the queen or with his royal champion. He'll dive bomb this eagle artillery with the king and the queen, drop it in the ice golem to assist, and he'll use the dragons to cut the path of the queen and force her into the base there with the king. But he will end up pulling the CC there with his king at some point if there's lava hand in there, and he'll have to deal with that. But he does have the blimp going after the tunnel early. It catches a tornado trap there, but it's still inside the ward ability. It's going to be fine. It should still get the Town Hall. No big deal. But he will have a lot of his troops there hit by the poison and the Town Hall blast. And that is going to hurt there while he's also fighting off the CC. Uh, this could be a little bit of a problem here, Echo. I was liking how things were going with the heroes up top. But yeah. right now, I think there's going to be a lot of death happening on the bottom side of the base. Those dragons and dragon riders Ooh. are going to be just slaughtered as they make their way around. Queen is getting slammed as well. Now she's got to deal with a rocket balloon, which just dies right on top of her. There she's oh. down. Oh my gosh. This Wait, is... he's still got the bats. That's true. He's got the bats. Uh, we he's got a lot of freezes. He's got I four freezes. Bats. He's got to he use them soon, this wizard though. tower at the bottom. If he, if he gets this wizard tower at the bottom of the base here, the bats might be able to still take the rest of it. Is I wonder where he starts them. So he's going to go There's right on top of top, the but scatter. Right on top of the scatter wizard shot. Tower... I don't know. The wizard tower and the scatter shot are oh. both. Okay, interesting. He'll try to it's... save the dragon here so we can go into cleanup. He'll freeze up the multi inferno. Maybe uh... he might be giving up on the attack here and and just pushing his way through the multi inferno and trying to get the dragon to do a lot of cleanup down behind. He's going to be running out of freezes before he engages the scatter shot. But look at that. He was able to get the multi inferno down. The bats start to work their way through. Wait, can he get this wizard? Wait oh, a second. He if he freeze. gets the scatter shot, he can have the dragon finish off the wizard tower. Can I get the oh, arch tower too? Get the arch tower. He oh, he be... misses the arch tower, but that's okay. That's okay. He's he's got a little. He's got a lot of time to work with here. I don't one know how much dragon, that dragon has. Archer. He's got to get the the archer on mm. the on that camp or up. Yeah, there he goes. Archer yeah. in the camp. He's listening. Yeah. To I, I don't think he's out of the time. 
no. even if he can finish it off here, he's not going to have the time. The archer's going to oh. be able to really pick away at this <laughs> dragon as well. Yeah, yeah. the dragon's going to yeah. go down to the the archer wizard tower. Just too much to get through. But what, good effort, though. I loved what he was thinking, as you mentioned, about going through and take. Oh, look at this! A uh, figures the dragon just using the bats to let the dragon get that extra value at least he's pulling in mm -hmm. that percentage but again this is going to be two two stars for happy endings 2.0 when you're playing in yeah. space station gaming who so far has gotten three triples so uh they're yeah. kind of sitting in behind a little bit right now and again an archer taking now i'm always thinking about time <laughs> you know, always wondering right. save yeah, as much time exactly. as you can but uh, right here 87 percent yeah, that's a that's a solid attempt there. Uh, he almost was able to recover it. I think if he had one more freeze or something to go tank that wizard tower on the backside to save the bats, if the bats had survived that, he might have been able to make it through. I mean, and Verum, what do you think about that? That was absolutely cl almost clutch there that he, he almost pulled that through. That was that's really close to recovery. It's it was so funny to see both of you trying to figure like, where do the bats come from? <laughs> There's like, there's a, this is a jigsaw puzzle. How do these pieces all fit together? Does he put in the bottom? Does he try and save the dragon? How does he utilize his freezes? And I actually feel like if things like the way the bats pa pathed, I think if it had been slightly different, he may have actually been able to clutch that. If the bats hadn't split quite the way they did, been able to focus fire down the archer tower, it might have been able to make just, just enough. But mm -hmm. I think enough damage had been done. And I need to see like, these early warden abilities. They're, they, they are so essential. And it did kind of happen there. The troops were slowed up enough. The tornado trap on the blimp didn't get the town hall down quick enough. The poison, the gigabomb, I think, did more damage than they were expecting. And it all just kind of fell off from there. Either way, we're not seeing deja vu. Things aren't identical. We have had now two two stars coming out. So the work is certainly there. It needs to be done. And SSG are looking really darn scary, I must say. Either way, this is going to be a heck of a war. I can't wait to see how it finishes up. Echo, Eric, let's go. Yeah, if Space Station Gaming is able to pull in a three-star right here, it's going to be pretty much in their control the rest of this war. And we get Gereticus coming on in with a, what is he got, a Zap Dragon attack right here. Let's see if he can get that done. I mean, you really want to triple right here if you're Space Station Gaming to essentially secure the war. Let's see if, what are you thinking? You like the strategy for that here, Eric? Well, let's we'll see what he can do here. He sends in a couple rocket balloons. He first typed off the mortar on that side, so the rocket balloons didn't have to stop at the mortar and waste some of the time at the haste there. Then he was able to go in and clear all the traps in the area there to ensure that that blimp was not going to hit a tornado, and he was able to successfully take the town hall. Also get some buildings beyond the town hall. Big value out of the rocket balloons there. He was able to zap out everything beyond the town hall. I mean, this is a um, uh, really nice setup here to, to go into this. He's already funneling out the top corner there with his queen he can join that queen with the king they can work along the outside of the base there and he can just push these dragons and dragon runners right through that scatter shot and into the core of the base he'll kind of need to hold on to his board ability until he gets a little bit deeper in the base here because he'll need it to go through the enemy queen as he engages that backside scatter shot but he does have his heroes with access into that eagle artillery already wall breaking it up ahead and now he just needs to be patient and just hold that water ability for just a little bit longer yeah, it's about that time, though. He's getting close up on that queen right now. He could use, there we go, use beautiful timing, protecting a little bit from the queen, and as they get on top of that scatter shot as well, queen's going to be able to take out the eagle artillery. Uh, this is looking pretty nice here for Gereticus as he makes his way through. The dragon riders over there on the eastern side of the base, the champion's being dropped in with Lassie as well. She's going to be able to make her way around, taking out, yeah, this is this is looking pretty good here, Eric. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. thinking he's going to be a... Uh, Pulling in a three star on this one, which is going to uh, heavily have Space Station gaming in control of this war. Although it's it's not over yet. Free spell. You do have a queen and a champion ability, and we can't Got forget it. about that that <laughs> solo archer, the clutch archer. You know she's gonna do some work, but that's <laughs> that's the attack right there. Multiple dragons, one dragon rider left, and all heroes still alive. Although there were no healers in this attack whatsoever, all heroes made it until the end. With the queen and her ability, swag right there yeah. at the end. Wow. This is a four three-star war so far. I mean, this is Space Station gaming that we're used to seeing, putting up performances that are insane like this. They didn't do yeah. it in that last war versus Train Station, but they're bringing it right now against Happy Endings and really keeping Happy Endings on their heels, not giving them the opportunity to breathe. 
Yeah, I mean, they only got one triple so far against them, and that's uh, definitely holding them back. The Space Station Gaming team has really only got to get a one star to be able to close out the last one, or really, a, if they get a two star in the last one, it puts it completely out of reach here because they already have two stars left on the board here from Happy Endings, and they'll have to try to give themselves any chance that they can to be able to make a comeback. But, I mean, Space Station has already put up more triples in their first four attacks than they did in the previous war, and they would have been able to pull out that performance in the last war. It would have sent them to the Grand Finals, uh, potentially going against uh, Train Station Gaming there. So kind of crazy that they they uh, pull out the performance on this one, but slacked on the one before it. <laughs> I guess it just is a testament to the difference in the base building there across this uh, whole Space Station Gaming family here between all of their teams. And uh, they're looking strong here as he continues to push his way in. Nemesis driving with this uh, Warden ability that hasn't been used yet to delay it until that blimp reaches the very edge of the Warden ability. Now he can pop it and he can cross all the way to the Town Hall. He freezes up the sweeper to make sure the blimp can travel through that area a little bit easier and arrive to that Town Hall. Rage comes down, he'll drop that Town Hall. He activates the Town Hall with the crash damage of the blimp and he's looking pretty solid here to continue all the way through. Still holding on to his road champion, just needs to deal with the enemy road champion on the backside so it doesn't stall up his road champion. Yeah, 100%. It looks like he's coming in with the Hydra strategy as well. There were no healers. for. There was no queen charge whatsoever. There were no bats in here. So this is a strategy that we really don't haven't at least seen as often Ooh. tonight. Queen is going to be able to shut down the defending okay. queen. Champion's going to make her way around as well. Going to shut down that scatter shot. Skeleton. Yeah, oh, skeletons are, are tying her oh, up. She's, just... she's not going to get it. And the Grand Warden's Warden going to have to pick away skeletons. Yeah. Queen's going to go down. Okay. She's out of here. Got some uh, good troops here. The Warden will pick off the scatter shot. The Warden has the Unicorn and the Owl. Both of those pets there can work with the Warden and continue to push him through. He's got oh. tons of time here. The Dragons are still up. The Warden now working with that Dragon Rider. They'll get the Archer Tower down. He's got a Dragon with the Warden as well. The Warden, the Dragon Rider, and the Electric Owl with that Dragon are going to be able to clear out this last Tesla. It is going to be a triple, but they're going to need a big D defense here to take down Space Station. They've been absolutely flawless all the way through the war. And if they don't one star in the last attack here, then it's not going to give an opportunity for Happy Endings to make a comeback. They already have two misses. They now have two triples and they've done everything they can at this point with this attack to give themselves a chance, but they're going to need a massive defense on this next one. I hope that Happy Endings has their best base just in their back pocket for this last one to shut down Space Station, but I'm telling you what, Space Station looks like they are on fire right now. 12 stars, 100% to 10 stars. I mean, if Happy Endings was playing any other team, this would be a pretty solid performance out of them. 96%, 10 mm. stars, but they're playing against a team right now that's that's so far going flawless. Is it possible that we see a second perfect war? Knocking on wood right now so we don't curse anything, but <laughs> a second perfect war in one night. That has never been done. And it's, again, another one of these Inferno Dragon Rider attacks, this time done by Lexnos. Lexnos is absolute monster here, but he did time fill in the last war. That mm -hmm. was contributing to their loss there between him and... Uh, and uh, Rigo Torres, and Rigo Torres was able to get his in this one here, and uh, we'll see if Lexnos can do the same and make up for the last war, close out the war, end it strong, the last attack of his season for the ESL Mobile Challenge third place match here, and uh, this is this is his last chance to shine here as they will lock in third place if they can get this at least a two-star here. He'll go in with an early blimp to go snipe out the town hall. It arrives on target. He'll lock in the first star, climb his way to the second star, lock in the win here. And Space Station Gaming is going to lock in third place in the ESL Mobile Challenge Finals here. And now he just needs to close it out here and see if he can end it with style with the triple. I mean, we would love to see another Inferno Dragon Rider attack come on in with a triple. But man, what a performance overall out of Space Station Gaming in this war tonight. This is what we're used to seeing out of these guys. Or actually, this is kind of a treat, seeing something this solid. You do have the Dragon Rider shutting down that uh, that Scattershot. Will it stand? Scattershot's getting is another shot. 
As what? Is it this the same base that we just saw get attacked a second ago? <laughs> I think they ran two no. copies of the same base here. And so they were able to hit it like exactly the same here. <laughs> That's no kind of funny. Way. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, he has his real champion. He can swagger. They swagged the last one. They're going to do it again. Are you kidding me? No, Wait, they're gonna, they, have have the champion. they have to use the champion. You got to pull might, on the yeah. before. <laughs> he's what? got so much time. The world champion can close it out. He's just going to, he's just toying with them at this point. He's got the win locked in and he'll oh. just try to hold on and see if he can swag his world champion. <laughs> he's going to be able to do it. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> Lex knows from Space Station Gaming gets the triple with the swag RC. Wait, oh, no, wait. No, okay. he's got to use All the right. All right, he's... <laughs> He's got to use it. Oh, and you know he feels bad. There's the shield. There's the shield. Oh, my God. Now, oh, you said it. He's just having fun right there. But that is the <laughs> second perfect war tonight. One from train station, one from space station. That is just incredible performance. Where was this space station team in the last war? Craig, <laughs> such it's like we saw a different team right now. Super impressive. I want to see Happy Endings 2.0 come through with a really nice attack, though. To finish things off, they will be going home in fourth place in the ESL Mobile Challenge with Space Station Gaming taking third place. And remember, we still have to take a look at a couple of wars later on to see who's going to be coming through with first or second. So exciting stuff. But let's get into Happy Endings 2.0, their final attack. Nemesis 98 coming on in with a Queen Charge Dragon Rider attack. Yeah, unfortunately, unable to make a comeback in the war now, but I mean, Space Station Gaming lost to Train Station, Train Station Gaming, Gaming. team to 13, and uh, at least uh, Happy Endings can get in here and show that they could do the same if they get the triple right here as he comes in with this Queen Charge in from the right side. He will send a wall breaker in to punch his queen into the town hall he's got a pretty solid funnel to drive her in delaying the healers until he can get a better angle for the healers to approach the town hall and not get targeted by the town hall as he makes that approach a lot of damage incoming so we'll have to rage up not too much that he can't heal through it so it's still looking pretty solid here he's got rocket balloons rocket balloons Okay, he froze him. He froze him. Those rocket balloons are scary. Get the poison in the right spot, too. Covering the Supermarines, perfectly handling that CC, which can be very, very dangerous for a queen charge. And if you don't react appropriately, you can drop your queen through her ability and end that charge immediately. Oh, he dealt with it really nicely. And he's going to get good access to the base as well as he gets into this large compartment. I love queen charging into a compartment that's just a, a large percentage of the base as this one is right now. So she's even if she's not broken any deeper into the base, she's going to be able to access so much just making her way around that interior wall of that compartment. And it uh, looks like she's doing a nice job of it right now. You got that, that balloon coming in to clear the skies, make sure her healers stay alive. She's going to be able to, be able to take down the defending queen as well. I want to see another rage spell used on top of our queen, though, just to, yep, there we yep. go. Nicely done. Stone Slammer leading the way, or actually trailing behind a little bit right now. Dragon Riders behind that, and a couple of balloons as well. It's looking really good so far. I'm liking how this is setting up. And he ended up having to use his queen ability because he delayed that rage a little bit there, but he's holding on just fine. The queen will tank the scatter shot as he moves in to the uh, core of the base here with one dragon rider splitting off. Actually, two of them to go get that scatter shot down. They'll move into the sweeper right after that. His queen will continue to try to beat through the walls there and try to get back into action a bunch of red or black bombs i mean going off in the middle he was able to get that left hand corner cleared but that grand expo chipping away at his road champion he can go invisible if needed he still has her ability she has a lot of life left in her looking really really strong here ending on this eagle artillery making the final push and closing out strong here they can't take the win but at least they can get in here and get the triple on the board here and happy endings will rack in their 13th star and finish it with three swag spells here he's got a rage and invisibility and a freeze lines him up across to the base and locks in the 13th star for happy endings they gotta feel happy about the way that it ended there <laughs> but it is the end of the road for both of these teams as their season comes to a close locking in third and fourth place and that is still a decent chunk of money a lot of prize money but the biggest prize money is to be coming in from our next matches we're gonna have train station gaming going against lost